We're back with Dustin Sellers, co-founder of Post Service Hawaii, one of Hawaii's largest outsourced employee administration companies. What made you decide to leave your other businesses and then come back here to Hawaii? Well, Ben Godsey, who's my partner, and I were, we, we became partners. He was at Morgan Stanley at the time because we, sh- we saw that we both had competencies that the other didn't, uh, which is another maturing process <laughs> in, in my career development, which was a recognition that um, I really love sales. I really love marketing, business development. Um, can do operations, but not, you know, not born and raised to, to be a, a core operator. Ben uh, died in the wool, strong financier, CFO, uh, with a good operational mind. Um, we, we formed and created a partnership and uh, formed our kind of constituents behind us to help us find small businesses that we could actually take uh, leadership active roles in and manage and help grow. Um, and pro service, truly serendipitous, serendipitously, was the one business that we saw where it was a perfect fit for us. Unfortunately, Ben's wife was still getting her PhD at Stanford, and uh, he had to commute uh, 31 weeks and 52 weeks last year. But I got on the ground here uh, in advance of him, and then he moved his whole family over in January. So for us, it's been really a nice kind of two-year run now of, uh, of really kind of coming in and taking a business that had great bones, um, but just lacked a little bit of leadership and, and perspective of where the company could go. And so it's been a real journey. So ProService was actually the first acquisition target that you looked at. No, we actually looked at about, I would say, we looked hard at about 200 companies um, from Vancouver to Denver to, uh, to San Diego. We, we kind of had the, um, the, the cross-section of businesses. We looked at, I mean, the litany of types of businesses we looked at. We, you know, sometimes it makes us laugh, sometimes it makes us cry. Um, but, you know, when, when, when you don't have actually sequestered capital, when you don't actually have a, a pure fund, but you're acting like you do and you're trying to get business owners to recognize that we could actually do the acquisition and actually be really um, uh, accretive to their business and to their, to their core organization, that process is, is a long and, and an arduous one. So we were always looking at probably four to six businesses at different times. The connectivity with Pete Paisley, the, the original founder, and really the uh, the mana he had for, for where he saw the business could be and what Ben and I could bring to it, um, which is really how all good deals get done. I mean, the only way a good deal gets done is if there really is connectivity there, not just on how much cash is in the deal and how much debt and equity, but really d- does the handoff, is the handoff really uh, authentic? And for us, it really was. The transition was, was, was fantastic and has been, and that's the reason the success of the business, I think. Were you in business with your friend prior to Pro Service Hawaii? So we were uh, called Headland Partners in San Francisco, and we were what I like to call interlopers into private equity in the sense that we had raised uh, about a half million dollars for operating budget purposes, but really we're operating under a concept called a search fund. And search funds uh, are all the rage at either Stanford or Harvard Business School, and it's a way in which kind of passive, ingress, uh, passive investors can interact with a young management team and combine to do a fairly large deal. So it's not seed capital, it's not your traditional, it's true private equity in its, in its purest form, and yet they're backing a management team in, in, in search of a business which is fairly unique uh, versus us just finding business plans and then kind of throwing it over the transom. And so that was the, the model that we were working on. It took us two and a half years to find pro service and to, to actually get that deal done. Are you guys looking at doing more acquisitions or are you concentrating primarily on pro service? Well, it's interesting you ask that because if you think of pro service as a platform, we, uh, we do health care, we do workers' comp, we do HR administration and escalation handbooks and consultation for folks on job descriptions and helping them with their org design. So as the W-2 goes, we, you know, we are a, a big piece of that backbone to what I say keeps the train running on time for, for small businesses. There's not a week that goes by, though, that you know, any one of our 800 businesses that we work with don't ask me about IT services or accounting or accounts receivable or referrals. So you know, as a business service platform, we hope over time to continue to be able to be additive in that area. Right now, we're keeping our heads down. We're in the second inning of a nine-inning game. On the mainland, this concept has really grown, and we are you know, really seeing that growth and that, that groundswell um, now uh, here in Hawaii. 
from your experiences of those two companies and even the acquisition, what advice could you give to other people that you've learned from those experiences as you started Pro Service Hawaii? Yeah, so you know, I stay fairly close to the point on these because you know you, you can give people a lot of advice that isn't pragmatic, and uh, f- for me, it's actually very simple. It's do business with people that have good reputations, and always keep your word. It never seems to amaze me how many times if I've broken those one of those two rules, and it's come back to, to bite me in the okole. Um, and and it you know really really, and that's you know my business partner and I's bond that that really if you keep your word and you always work with other folks that keep their word, contracts, litigation, many of the things that plague so many deals and so many businesses. You hear people that bought a business and they did some kind of an earn out and turns out that the, you know, the EBIT wasn't quite what it was supposed to be. Well, you know, usually you can find that out in the character of the individual that you work with. And over time, if you can keep your own character straight and narrow and always do what you said you were going to do, it's going to work in your favor always. Thanks for tuning in. Stay tuned for more on Greater Good Radio.